are many misconceptions about being a coder or a programmer, and today I really want to debunk them. Before we get into this, I just want to quickly say a massive thank you to Penguin Random House for sponsoring this video. And not only for sponsoring it, but also for bringing this book, Wizards and Robots, to my attention. It's a book written by Will I Am, and its primary focus was to try and get young people more interested in programming and computer sciences, which I think is great for someone who is known to be a creative individual to do something like this. It shows that people who are interested in these sorts of things, they aren't just how the media might portray them or how we might envision them being in our minds. And let's talk about that right now. Let's get the first point out of the way. Coding is hard really, really hard. If you want to be a programmer, you're gonna have to work the hardest you've ever worked before. Not true. Just like anything else you might want to learn, coding, no, it's not necessarily easy, but it can be learned by anyone. All you need is passion and determination and you got this. I like to think of coding as a version of learning another language. However, it's kind of like a magic language because you get to influence technology. And in this day and age where we're using technology every single day, that gives you power. Just, just think about that. Stemming from this, point two, coders are geniuses. Like you have to have massive brain to be a coder. Not true. Coders are often seen as these extremely intelligent individuals who just sit in front of a computer and type out an alien language that nobody else can understand. And that's really not how it is. Coding is more about problem solving and logic. And guess what? It's kind of what we do every day as human beings anyway. I believe a coder's superpower is failure and becoming comfortable with failure. And that's one of the reasons why I'm so glad I did learn how to code, because it teaches you that actually failure is just the first step to success. You need to learn how to debug, how to fail, and then figure out why you're failing to then succeed in what you want to do. This is kind of proof that no coders aren't super intelligent, they're just okay with failing a bunch of times until they finally get it work and their code finally works. It's just how it is and that's how we are as humans. The next point, you must be a mathematician, very good at mathematics. I am not gonna lie, maths was my most dreaded subject in school. I really found it difficult. I wasn't an overachiever and I tried very hard to be average at mathematics. However, I would say that I am a coder. I have worked as a front-end web developer. I am now developing games in C-sharp, so I know how to code, but I'm not an amazing mathematician. Of course, you still need the basic knowledge of algebra and things like that. That's not what a coder does. They spend most of their time writing the language of computers over writing mathematic formulas. And also to be a coder, there's a bunch of different types of coders that you might want to be. As I already said, I was a front-end web developer. Front-end meaning it's more about the design and the look and kind of the interaction on the surface level. I didn't have to figure out many mathematical formulas because that was the job of a back-end developer. Google that if you want to <laughs> because that's that's too much to explain in this video but basically different types of coders need a basic understanding of maths, yes, but you don't need to be a mathematician genius. So many people think that you need a science degree to be a coder and of course that seems like the logical option to go to university and study it properly just like it is for anything that you might want to learn. However, in this digital age and if you have gotten to this point and you've realised that you do have what it takes to become a coder and anyone can do it, then there are many more ways to learn how to code outside of the stereotypical education system. For instance, I didn't go to university before getting my job as a front-end web developer. I went through an apprenticeship instead. In the evenings, I would learn on Code Academy. Code Academy is a website that's free and teaches you how to code. All you need is to believe in yourself, to have self-motivation, 
and a computer. A, a, a computer would help. Internet connection too. There are loads of websites like Code Academy, which I will put their links in the description below for you to check out. And as well as websites that teach you, there's also websites where you can simply ask questions and get in touch with the coding community. It's very open source. They love to help each other out. And it makes the whole process easier because <laughs> no coders aren't geniuses. No, no, no. This brings me to point number five, that is coding is boring to learn and to teach. It's not true. These websites that I've just explained to you, they are gamified so you get badges and points for learning, <laughs> which I found really fun. I'm a gamer anyway, I'm competitive. So I wanted to kind of up my score, get the new badges and things like that. And not only that, the lessons that they provide are just really interesting. There's so many things that you can do with code. Yes, you can build a website and things like that, but also you can animate in code. And there is a website called Khan Academy, and I remember doing my first ever animate with CSS3 lessons, and I found them so much fun. There's also a bunch of more physical and practical projects that you can do. I know Raspberry Pi are great for getting young people involved in programming and coding by using a small computer. This computer has GPI opens, it's got everything you need to do physical programming as well as screen-based programming. You can make robots and stuff like that. Robots! How is that boring? I don't know. <laughs> Not to me anyway. Number six, the best programmers are young. So if you didn't start young, then there's no point you learning how to code now. This is bogus. I mean, I kind of understand it because technology is advancing so, so quickly, so you have to keep up with that. However, I think this very reason means that no matter what age you start, you're always going to be on the same level. Unlike, say, learning a guitar or something like that, where when you start young, it really does help you because that's not actually going to change, you're just going to get better at it. But coding, does change. So it really doesn't matter what age you start learning as long as you're passionate and motivated enough to keep up with it and have fun with it. There's always more to learn with coding and technology. That's what I find so exciting about it because you are never going to be perfect at it. There's always going to be more to learn. So let's get into the more physical and kind of personal attributes of what people think in their heads when they hear the term coder or programmer. Coders are nerds. <laughs> no, not every coder spends their spare time watching reruns of Star Trek or eating chips on the sofa while they're playing games. It sounds weird me saying chips. I mean, I mean like Doritos, but chips are an American word. Anyway, no, they're not wearing comfy jeans all the time. No, they're not always wearing a meme top with some crazy clever coding joke on it. And no, they're not always awkward around the opposite sex either. All you need is a brain and a computer. Coders can be anyone, any gender, any age, any style, any personality attribute that you can think of. They could be a coder, just like anything. They could be anything, so just stay open-minded. <laughs> Number eight, coders are antisocial hermits. It's often perceived that coders work alone in dark and quiet rooms, or even better, in their mum's basement. But this simply is not the case. I mean, I do have to admit, I do like to not be sociable when I'm trying to crack a problem, when I'm trying to figure out what syntax I should be using to problem solve. Like anything, if you're doing this and someone interrupts your thought process, you kind of lose your train of thought and then it goes and gets lost. However, coders also need each other. They need people because if they can't problem solve on their own, the very best thing to do is to share that problem with a coworker, with someone else. Even if they don't really understand code, it's good to kind of walk through what your problem is, what you've done to try and fix that problem, and take them through step by step. Because as I said, coding is all about problem solving. And working together to solve that problem 
often helps. And I've already kind of touched on the fact that there are a lot of open source communities and online places for people to help you with your code. Coders want to help each other, they want to talk to each other, they want to come up with great ideas together. And there are also events for coders and programmers, like hackathons, where they'll spend whole weekends of loads of people just being together, working together, having fun together. So it shows that no, they're not always just on their own, in their rooms working alone. As a coder, it's a rite of passage to become an anonymous hacker, to break into locked online accounts and to tamper with websites, to make your life a little less secure. No. Hell no. Hacking is a completely different way of coding, just like I explained to you, front end and back end development are different types of coding. Just because you know how to code does not mean that you necessarily know how to hack into someone's personal private details. And also, it's just morals. Just because you know how to code doesn't mean that you're going to use this ability to do something illegal online. Don't be worried about that. If someone says that they know how to code, it does not mean that they know how to hack into your bank account and take all your money. <laughs> no. <laughs> and finally, the one that gets to me the very most. Coding is not creative. Not all code is a series of ones and zeros. Although, there was a creative freaking genius that turned binary code into Star Wars, which is pretty cool. I'll try and get that up on screen for you and you can watch that. It's, it's Star Wars in binary with ones and zeros. How crazy is that? And that just shows you that if you are a creative person, if you want to think creatively, coding gives you more opportunities to do this because you're able to perform interactions with whatever you are creating. Think about it. Games are creative. It's a way of telling a story and of course you need to code to do that. There are even people using code to make interactive films, to make elements of their video stay relevant. So using a graph that will always use relevant data. And as this all progresses, there are ways that people who perhaps aren't so technically minded and are more into the design element of things, that they can create experiences that before would have been primarily code. So, I mean, Unity 3D, which is what I use to make games, it's easily laid out. You don't have to write heaps and heaps of code, but obviously having the basic understanding allows you to do more with it. The more code you understand, the more the doors open up and the more you have creative freedom. With other creative mediums like writing or films, you're basically creating a passive form of entertainment. But with code, you get to manipulate data, you get to use relevant information and you get to merge this with your creations. Perhaps you can visualize the whole world's emotions by using tweets being polled in real time, looking for emotive words and seeing which emotion is being used the most. Yes, these are real world things. I'll put some links in the description below. I personally now am actually using the Facebook SDK in my next video game just to make the whole experience more personal to that person who is experiencing that creative thing. And now my whole brain is... <laughs> Basically, there's a lot you can do with it. It is creative. And anyone who says it's not, I'm just like, and not only that, just the whole premise of coding is problem solving. To be creative, you have to come up with ideas, you have to problem solve how you're going to realise these ideas in the real world. That's what coding's all about. Again, I just want to say a massive thank you to Penguin Random House for sponsoring this video and also bringing to my attention the book by Will I Am, Wizards and Robots. The fact that Will I Am has made this book, which by the way is about wizards and robots at war together and a computer scientist who made the first robot, pretty darn cool. And to show that he's interested in all of that just shows that anyone can be interested and can do it if they want to. You don't have to be male or female. You don't have to be a nerd. You don't have to be unsociable. You don't have to be awkward. You don't have to be old. You don't have to be young. You don't have to be born here or born on the other side of the world. Anyone can be a coder. I really hope that this has made you think about programming and coding a little bit differently. If you are interested in it, there will be a bunch, a bunch, a bunch of links down below that can help you get started. You can do it because, hey, 
you're not the stereotypical coder because that doesn't exist. Let me know in the comments below if this has changed your mind or if you're a coder and you agree or if you disagree. I wanna know that as well. There'll also be a link to William's book, War, below. It's not actually war, it's like wizards and robots, but obviously there's a war going on between them. So you can check that out if you want to. If you like wizards, if you like robots, if you like computer sciences, you might enjoy his book. Have a lovely day or evening. Bye.